uh, the installation kernel for the latest version here. So I'm going to go into the installation directory of uh, HPC MIPS 501, which is the uh, the latest at this time version of NetBSD. And I'm going to grab the uh, NetBSD.gz, which is the uh, which is the kernel, the installation kernel. There's an installation and a boot kernel for uh, for NetBSD. So we're going to uh, we're going to just going to create the path here and uh, copy that out. And let's see. And so now we're going to uh, we're going to go up a level and run run an application that boots. Uh, forces a boot into this uh, Linux environment. Uh, we're going to do that now. We're going to go to an application that, again, we'll cover how to get this in another segment. Um, it's called PSD or Pocket BSD Boot. And the number one simply stands for uh, there's a PSD boot and a PSD boot one. Uh, the one apparently is a uh, uh, version of this that's designed for HPCs with certain color limitations. This one seems to work for me, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. And uh, that path that we just copied, I'm just going to paste that. Um, and you'll notice that ends in NetBSD GZ. And the starting point of the path is storage card, because that's where the compact flash is. The selection here underneath is IBM WorkPad Z50. Um, I'm going to go into Properties. There's no options at this stage. But if you go into Properties, uh, some folks like to use reverse video. It's a little easier to capture the video on that. Uh, when we're done with this, we'll select Auto Boot, which enables this to uh, to actually uh, boot continuously into Linux uh, in the future. So I'm just going to boot right here. It's going to erase all my settings. I don't care because um, you know this is going to go into a Linux environment anyway. I'm going to click Yes. And now it's going to try to load uh, the um, uh, NetBSD 5.0.1 HPC MIPS uh, release uh, and, and this MIPS release is designed for uh, a multitude of uh, HPCs or handheld PCs uh, that were made by companies like Sharp. Uh, IBM, of course, is this one. Um, uh, I believe uh, Compaq made a few, uh, NEC, etc. So um, uh, these these pieces of hardware were, were very useful at their time, uh, but the Windows CE operating system is really a bit long in the tooth. Uh, so many folks like to uh, make use of this hardware and uh, uh, migrate it into a Linux environment. It's, it's really one of those laptops, uh, or netbooks, uh, you could call it, uh, that was really built to very high standards. Uh, one could say that maybe laptops or netbooks of today really aren't built to these standards with large keyboards, strong cases, and, uh, and great battery life. Uh, the extended battery for this unit is actually designed uh, for uh, over 16 hours of full usage, uh, which a lot of people consider pretty amazing. So that's a that's a full coast-to-coast uh, -coast flight in the USA, uh, if not way more. Of course, you can go back and forth on one charge, and uh, and this thing will keep on ticking. So uh, that's one of the neat things. The other reason to go to this operating system, as we're waiting for this kernel to load, uh, so that we can install the OS. Um, is that uh, we're, we're migrating into Flash. So we're going to be using Compact Flash for the entire operating system instead of what it was before, which was uh, battery-backed Flash, which was technically volatile, because if you cut all the batteries, you lose all your settings, and the OS uh, reverts back to its original ROM state. So that's one of the features that a lot of people didn't like about Windows C, which is they would lose everything they'd be working on uh, if they lost all power for a significant amount of time. So it looks like the uh, the installation kernel for NetBSD 5.0.1 is loading, and uh, we're just going to go through the installation here. And uh, during that install, we're actually going to uh, do something very interesting, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> we're going to actually download the entire operating system off the internet. So that's kind of a cool feature, and uh, you'll see that done in this pr in this. Uh, demo so that you don't have to remember any commands when you're going through it. So I just clicked enter on that first screen. Uh, there's a little bit of text overlap, but that's no big deal. We're going to click install that PSD to hard disk, so that's option A. And then we're going to click yes, because we definitely want to do this. It's going to start scanning for hardware, and it's going to say, are you sure? We hit, we, uh, hit enter for yes. 
<clears throat> and uh, it's going to start up here. It's going to say, what do you want to install? We're going to say full install. You know, we have a, we're running an 8 gig compact flash, which is formatted in a specific way that we'll cover in another segment. Uh, but we're going to click full install for that because there's really no uh, danger of running out of room. Uh, it's giving us some options here for the hard drive size. We'll just hit enter. It automatically detected this. So I'll just hit enter for sectors, enter for heads. Um, and then it, uh, it's, it's saying, uh, you know, we need to select the partition we want to install on. Because there's no hard drive here and we only have one compact flash card uh, and the other slots being used by the wireless card, uh, we, have the, we have two partitions on a CF card and the second partition is empty and we're going to put NetBSD on that second partition. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, edit the master boot record and what I'm going to do is um, So here we're going to select the MBR and uh, we're going to make sure that the second partition is uh, highlighted. We're going to hit enter and we're going to make sure it says NetBSD on type A. We're going to go to active, make sure it says yes. Install is also yes. Now install will only allow you to select yes if the type is NetBSD. So once it is, we'll select partition OK. Scroll down to partition OK. Set sizes for NetBSD partition. Those look OK to us. We'll just click accept. Those look fine. We'll click accept. The, net, the name of the drive is NetBSD. We'll click enter and uh, we'll continue clicking yes. And now it's going to attempt to format the, uh, the drives there. <clears throat> so on the new versions of NetBSD, um, uh, the, you don't see it here, but at the bottom of the laptop, all the lights are functional uh, with regard to the operating system. So there's a blinking light telling us that, uh, that this drive is being formatted and it just takes a couple seconds you see the dots going from left to right and once that's done then it's done formatting uh, the large partition here of the drive so that's going to kind of start working its magic and when that's done we'll continue on to the next step So we're almost done with the hard drive formatting and uh, for the uh, NetBSD partition. And uh, this process goes pretty quickly. I'm formatting about 7 gigabytes of data and it takes about 20 seconds to finish. So uh, that should be uh, being done here any second now. Now we're going to uh, do the drive preparation and I'm going to select the progress bar. We want to see some activity. Uh, we're going to select um, the installation of the operating system via FTP and this is going to attempt to start our um, wireless device. So we're going to see that, that it has found uh, WI0 which is the wireless card and it's going to auto select network media it's going to perform DHCP and it's just going to uh, pretty much automatically get everything we need uh, for this installation to happen so the DNS domain that we have is just our uh, is just our router uh, the host uh, the host name, uh, nothing there. We're not going to perform IPv6. And we're just going to say OK to the wireless config. And it's going to attempt to uh, pull up the wireless card here. And it's going to try to install uh, this information. So we're going to look at the settings here. All this looks very straightforward. There's no password. And we're just going to select Get Distribution. And as you can see, uh, this is wirelessly connected uh, to um, the NetBSD location where all the source files are.